Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Surprise and to Open Table. It's a delight, as always, to be with you. Um, my name is Warren Huckley. My pronouns are he and him. And it's my privilege to be the LGBTQA ministry facilitator here. We've been gathering for 15 years here at St. Brides um, as a way of welcoming the LGBTQA plus community and any other variety of human you care to name. You really are more than welcome here. And we aim to create a safe and sacred space where you can explore an inclusive Christian spirituality and see where a faith journey goes. We pray that it's a space where you can bring your whole self to God and to each other here in community. Tonight, it's a joy to welcome <coughs> Reverend Dr. Alex Claire Young, um, Alex's pronouns are they and them, to lead our service. Alex is a URC minister and is also the co-chair of the Open Table Network, which is what kind of grew out of the here and has become a bit of a national thing. Um, Alex is also a trustee of Inclusive Church, um, a consultant for One Body, One Faith, a member of Creating Sanctuary, a member of the Iona community, an author, a liturgist, and much more. Um, Alex is also a proud member of the trans community, and it's an absolute delight to welcome you. It really is, Alex. Thank you. One thing I really value about our community and what we've been able to do here is that wherever it proves possible, we try and make that side of the altar as open as we can this. Within the complexities of our institutional lives, Alex is a United Reformed Church minister, so tonight's communion is under the rights of the URC. And I'm grateful to Laura, our team vicar, Bishop of Liverpool, for their ongoing support of us being able to do that with authenticity and openness. Now, each November, we dedicate our communion service, because we gather twice a month here um, in our communion service, we always dedicate it to Transgender Day of Remembrance which is marked internationally on November 20th every year at the end of Transgender Awareness Week. And what that day does is it honours and remembers those who've been killed or died as a result of transphobia across the world. This year we remember over 390 names and they're just the ones that are recorded. Life is precious and our trans siblings are suffering, being used as a political football and much more. And I think it's more important than ever that we need to remember if one of us suffers, we all suffer. And so tonight I'd like, to stand, I'd like us to stand in solidarity with the worldwide trans community. In our prayers, let's call for the end of the vilification and violence so many people face. And perhaps we can also recommit ourselves to the work of making change both real and beyond these walls. We need to keep the change within, but we also need to work for change beyond these walls. And so that so many more people can see how fearfully and wonderfully made they are, beloved of God. As Alex says, solidarity and allyship has to be about actions, not only words. So Alex, please come and lead us in worship. Thank you for having me, everyone, and particularly Warren, um, not least because Warren put a massive amount of work into putting the liturgy together for this evening's service. Let's just spend a moment in quiet, preparing our hearts and minds to pay attention to God and to our fellow human beings as we worship. Let's be still. Please feel free as we join together in worship to join me in the words in bold type if you would like and feel able to do so. We gather in the name of God, who creates, the Saviour who liberates, and the Spirit who heals. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God. God, God for you with the truth and joy.
Shall we pray? Loving God, we bring to mind all of those who have suffered and still suffer as a result of transphobia. We feel every ounce of the heartbreak and sadness of their loss for just trying to be authentically themselves. Amen. Amen. Today is a special day. Thanks be to God for this day. Today we gather to observe Transgender Day of Remembrance. The Church engaged and united in prayer will see the powerful healing effects of God's loving will for us. Today we remember our siblings lost at the hands of hatred, evil and violence because of their gender identity and expression. God joins us in our grief and pain. Today we restore anew our commitment to protect, support and remember our trans and gender queer siblings. God bears witness to our restoration. Let our worship today honour our memories and reflect our renewal. Amen. Amen. And so as we begin to worship, let's sing together, God of freedom, God of justice. Despite our glory, we are yet frail, creatures bound to history and place, subject still to errors and limitations. 
Let us speak to one another of our common struggle to be whole. You pour out your spirit upon all flesh. We try to fence her in. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You speak through many languages. We block out many accents. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one body from all <coughs> our gifts. We refuse to be connected. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> May the God of love bring us back to themselves, forgive us our sins, and assure us of their eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord, God has forgiven us. Now we must forgive ourselves. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God of all creation, whose wisdom and love is boundless, you have many names, and you are beyond all divisions of gender. We have many names for our sexual and gender identities. We give you thanks for the diversity of sexuality and gender. At times we deny that diversity by holding too strongly and tightly to the divisions that we ourselves create. <coughs> As we come together to remember those trans people who have been killed, taken their own lives, or been injured, help us to honour their identities and the identities of all people. Help us to create a world where everyone can live with authenticity and dignity. Help us all who belong to every sexuality and gender to live our own lives in true fulfilment of our different identities, in fellowship with each other, and in the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our reading is from Judges chapter 16, starting at verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes your strength so great, and how you could be bound so that one could subdue you. They said to her, If they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and bound them with them, and said to them, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. The men lying in wait were in an inner chamber but they snapped the ropes off their arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you could be bound. They said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head with the web and make it tight with the pin, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So they told her their whole secret, and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite, to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, then my strength would leave me. I would become weak and be like anyone else. When Delilah realised that they had told her their whole secret, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, This time, come up, for they have told their whole secret to me. <coughs> then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She let them fall asleep on her lap, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of Samson's head they began to weaken, and their strength left them. Then she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. 
When they awoke from their sleep, they thought, I will go out as uh, at other times and shake myself free. But Samson did not know that the Lord had left them. So the Philistines seized them and gouged out their eyes. They brought Samson down to Gaza and bound, him, uh, bound them with bronze shackles. And they ground at the mill in the prison. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Our hearts and minds are open. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please pray with me. May we embody God's will in what we think, what we say, what we discern, what we pray and how we act. Amen. Trans Day of Remembrance, Tidor, is a complicated one for me. Tidor sometimes risks resting on the premise that trans people have died because they are trans. That holds the connected risk that trans people feel endangered and experience trauma. It can be a self-perpetuating cycle. Communities on the margins are often manipulated by normative societies into framing a narrative identity that is shaped around suffering, shame, marginalization or fear. Does that mean that we are wrong to remember, to grieve? No. It is, for many, though perhaps not all of us, a human need to grieve and to remember, and we will. But there are lots of things that we should grieve. We should grieve the ways in which we have been made to defend our identities, as if our very selves are shameful, pride only allowable once a year as a concession to our wondrous selves. We should grieve the ways in which marginalisation has in many places led to infighting and a lack of solidarity amongst LGBTQ plus people, to a culture in which we marginalise even ourselves. We should grieve the ways in which fear keeps many silent, whether about who we are, or about the injustices that we witness being perpetrated, or about the milestones, personal or communal, that we should be celebrating. Once someone very wise and very playful, speaking of Samson, told me about needing biblical characters to be fleshy, not floaty. For them, it was all about how they do their hair, what they wear, who they are, what it is like to live in their skin. I wonder what it would be like to live in Samson's skin. Unimaginably strong and yet so vulnerable that something as simple as a haircut could destroy you. Bound by a sense of calling to be countercultural that was not well understood by those around you. Betrayed by those who are supposed to love you and ultimately killed by your own hand alongside your adversaries. Did Samson die because of their name? No. Did Samson die because of the way they did their hair? No. 
Did Samson die because of who they were? No, not really. Samson died caught between and indeed tangled up within and acting as part of oppressive systems. No one is quite sure of Samson's strength, its source, Samson's identity or motives, Samson's relationships or even understandings of the faith that made them grow their hair. We don't actually know much about Samson. The story has reached the level of legend, not because we know Samson, but because of their strength and because of how, in obedience to God, they did their hair. Samson did not die because of their hair, and trans people do not die because they are trans. We are not mythic heroes or glorified innocents. We are not somehow ethereal or fatally flawed. We are not brave. We are not legends, nor are we stories. We are not our names or our pronouns, even though the utterance of those names and pronouns may just mean the world to us. We're real. We're flesh. We have haircuts, or not. Often not without some angst. We buy clothes. Again, often not with ease. We feel the fabric move against our skin. We celebrate when we complete a task, or, if you're like me, when we manage to get out of bed. We cry when someone says something horrible about us. We eat and drink. We feel everything from ecstasy to terror. We are human beings. I wonder sometimes if the machine, all the parts of it, the systems, all the parts of them, the papers and the politicians, all the flavours of them, forget that. Soon we will have the opportunity to see on the screen a list of names of those who have been killed. It's important for many of us to take the time to process this, to pay respect, to honour our siblings and our brothers and our sisters. This is a list of names of people who are trans, but they, like us, are more than a list of names. They are around 320 human beings made up of the stuff of all of us or more. 94% women or trans feminine, many worked in the sex industry, many affected by racism, almost half migrants or refugees, just over a quarter killed in the homes where every day they woke up, ate, lived, slept, breathed. They're more than their names. They are our neighbours, siblings, friends, children, kindred, and they are more than their identities or relationships to us. They are individual human beings who should still be breathing. There is an irony in the fact that Samson died together with a temple building. I am often told that it is not okay to be trans because the body is a temple. So let's think for a moment about temples. Ezekiel's temple has a river flowing through it. The temple in 1 Kings is decorated with gold and horticulture, not to mention multiple angels. The body in Paul's first letter in the, to the Corinthians is described as being one body with many diverse parts. Bottom line, temples are not unadorned, static, dead things. Temples are decorated, changing, alive. If God is the ground of all being, as many people of faith believe, then God resides within each of our atoms, each of our thoughts each aspect of who we are. My body is a temple, a fleshy dwelling of God in all its contradictions, in all its scars, and yes, in all its tattoos and piercings. Even more to the point, God is in the synapses that fire messages of maleness, queerness, complexity, creativity, and more every moment that I think. God is in the thoughts that I label good, and God is in the thoughts that I label bad. 
God is in the words that I mutter in frustration and those I sob in grief. God is in the affirmations I offer myself and others and God is in the criticisms that slip out unbidden or intentionally. No part of me is outside of God, the basis of all that is. No part of you is outside of God, the basis of all that is. God lives in trans bodies. God lives in all bodies. So what does it do to God's body when we read that so many people have been killed this year? What does it do to God's body when bits of the church suddenly announce that trans people can be baptised as if we somehow weren't human? What does it do to God's body when a trans pastor dies by suicide? What does it do to God's body when a famous author would rather go to prison than use a trans person's pronouns? What does it do to God's body when a trans child harms themselves because their school and family are not safe spaces to express their pain? Trans and non-binary bodies are temples. Trans and non-binary bodies are the dwelling place of God. Trans and non-binary bodies are sacred, precious. Jesus says, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Just as we remember, God remembers. Each of our hairs, just like Samson's, counts. Each of our cells is desired by God. And that is why we need to dream a new world into being. We need to live into a different political reality than the one we are miserably trudging through. We need to resist complacency, but we also need to resist the terrible propaganda of dread. Black theologian Cole Arthur Riley writes, be careful what doors you allow cynicism to lock in you. All dreaming is dangerous to those who benefit from our hopelessness. Inhale, cynicism won't save me. Exhale, I protect my being. Inhale, liberation is coming. Exhale, I keep watch. Let's do as Cole invites together. Inhale, cynicism won't save me. Exhale, I protect my dreaming. Inhale, liberation is coming. Exhale, I keep watch. I'd like to end this reflection with a poem by trans poet J. Hume entitled, We Miraculous Specimens. Give me shoots coiling up from this darkness. Give me a shovel, an escape route. Catch yourself in a mirror. The morning dew casts your own eyes back at you. Give me a grouse, chickens, the fish at Tynemouth Aquarium, these gender shifters, hearts straining themselves back into being. There isn't a word in grouse to explain what they're doing. There isn't an explanation other than, yes, it just happens, spontaneous transitions. The scientist with their lan rainbow lanyard eyes sparkling at the open cupboard, there they are. Do you see them? Do you see you? Racks of us on black base plates, the miracle, the only reason that Rothschild stuffed them. Catch me if you can. Tomorrow, the scientist says, we'll run free in the fields. The sun will catch us laughing and we will live like the miracles we are. And we will live like the miracles we are. Every time they try to destroy us, we learn how to live forever. May it be so. Amen. And so we're going to move now into a time of vigil.
This is a time for feeling pain, and it's also a time of hope. It's a time that is deeply important for many of us, and that is deeply difficult for many of us. So I want to remind you that the prayer room is there, if you need to take some time out. There will be, um, during this time, about seven minutes of names on the screen, um, together with a Kyrie. If you don't find it helpful to look at the names of those we have lost, you may prefer to close your eyes or perhaps trace your hands with a finger. Don't feel duty bound to do something if it doesn't feel right to you. This is your time, our time, to use as we wish. But before we come to our names, I'd like to invite friends to light candles for us. <clears throat> We light this first candle of pain to remind us of the fear we experience in the world in which we live. May the light of Christ dispel all our fears. We light the second candle of pain. Let us remember all those who have been victims of violence because of transphobia. May the light of Christ bring peace to the world. As World AIDS Day approaches, let us remember those who have died of HIV AIDS and those who live with HIV AIDS. May the light of Christ make us whole and take away our fear. Let us remember all the ways that we as transgender, intersex, lesbian, gay, bisexual, asexual and queer people remain <coughs> caught in our own inner struggles. May the light of Christ break all the chains that bind us.
Like the stories of others who have known the sting of oppression, our story is filled with pain and sorrow. We cannot pretend that it is otherwise, but that is not our whole story. <coughs> Let us celebrate our victories and our heroes too. God, we believe that violence and injustice cannot prevent your kingdom from coming. <coughs> Therefore, a light of hope grows strong as we hold firm in our faith in you and in each other. And so I invite friends to light the candles of hope. Let us remember the courage of those who express their love with pride. May the love in our lives shine through, through for all to see. Let us remember all those who are not LGBTQIA, but who share the struggle for justice and hope. May our arms be open in our journey to embrace all who come in peace. Let us remember the faith communities that have opened their doors and embraced their LGBTQI family. We celebrate the great love of God for us and those who helped us know that love. Let us remember those who, by the courageous way they lead their lives, are our heroes today. Let us follow their example and leave a brighter way for those who follow us. You are invited to add your own prayers, spoken or silently. God, create in us your body of healing love, a safe place for all who would come, a sanctuary of transparent peace in a groaning and painful world. For we ask these things in faith. Amen. If you would like and are able to, please stand. The risen Christ came among his disciples, bared his wounds, and said, Peace. The peace of God be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let's share a sign of peace, remembering to share as those around us would prefer.
praise for God's gifts. Or our welcome to receive. We praise you, loving and generous God, who delights in our lives and our loves, through Christ who knew and celebrated them, by the Spirit that blesses and keeps them. This day we hold out to you lives that are lost to us, firm in the hope that you have broken the power of death and injustice. That you are our mother hen, protecting your chicks under the shadow of your wings. That you seek and find the lost, restoring those who have been shattered and torn apart. That you are gathering all things to yourself, so that all may find peace in you, with angels and archangels to sing songs of joy forever. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our prayers and pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these humble gifts of bread and wine. That just as in the midst of betrayal and injustice, Jesus' disciples joined with Christ in a meal that felt like hope and freedom, so Jesus might be present with us as we face the grief of the betrayal of our siblings. Jesus, who took bread and broke it, giving thanks, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after cup, supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the blood of my new covenant. Do this whenever you drink it, to remember me. That night is a mystery to which the Holy Spirit draws us. A mystery we are invited to feel, touch, and taste now. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Jesus, come in glory. God is good to those who put their hope in them. God is good to those who look to them. So we eat and drink these holy gifts, trusting in God's love for us, in God's power to renew and inspire us and unite us into one body, in the risen body of Christ, our help and saviour. Amen. Amen. Seeking a world of justice and love, each in our preferred language or version, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
strict vegan, creator and maker of humankind. We are so fragile, formed of earth, and to earth we shall return. Give rest to Christ, to your servants, with these saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, on either side of the life of the lasting, and weeping over the graves, we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. So may the cross be the sign in which we begin again to undo the cords of violence the misery of exclusion and proclaim the love without conditions and the blessing of God, creator Christ and ever-present spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. So let's sing and you can stand if you would like to and are able to. Um, we're going to sing, join the song of praise and protest. 